So I've got to be honest with you, for the last seven or eight months this tank has been an absolute bane in my life. It has been stressing me out every single day and it's not the tank's fault. This tank is amazing. I love this fluval shaker. The tank, the glass, the frame, everything is great. The filtration is brilliant. But I think the issue I've been having with this tank is just because of the hair algae I've been getting everywhere. And I'm trying to work out where it's coming from. I'm pretty sure it's because of the lava rock. Now, when I set this tank up, I did say to you that I was going to experiment using lava rock. And I googled around and I watched some videos and there's plenty of people that have been using lava rock in reef tanks successfully without any issues. And to be fair, it's not looking too bad right now because the tank is starting to mature and I think the nutrients that were in the lava rock are starting to get used up. But it's not going away completely. Since my last update, I have changed the rock work around a little bit. I've removed a few bits and also stuff has started to grow. You might notice as well, there's now macroalgae in it. I found out the cause of some of my woes. It turns out Lamarck angels, although they are reef safe in terms of they don't tend to eat corals, they do like a bit of Calerpa and Botrycladia in their diet. So I've removed him and now we can uh, get on with the act of growing macroalgae. I've taken the lid off um, purely because it's easier for me. I can just reach over the top and I can uh, feed and do whatever maintenance I need to do without having to remove lids. And I was getting a bit frustrated with it because of the amount of condensation that you get on the lid and also salt creep getting onto the lid and just, it was getting a bit gritty. Now, obviously this tank hasn't been designed for marine fish. It's been designed for fresh water. So you wouldn't necessarily have these issues in a fresh water tank. I'm still using the standard light it comes with and a fluval reef LED bar. And you know, it is looking nice. I'm not gonna say it doesn't look nice. It's been a bit of an aggravation in my life. Whereas the other tanks on the same system, because this is all linked together, don't have any issues. They're kind of clean and things are growing and I'm happy with it. This tank is being a bit of a nightmare and it's it's got to be the lava rock. And I'm really annoyed about that because lava rock has been something that I wanted to use in reef tanks for a while. And obviously lava rock comes from lots of different sources. So it might just be this particular lava rock is imbued with something, I don't know, phosphates or loads of iron or something, I don't know. But you can see that it's just got hair algae everywhere. And look, hair algae isn't a problem, to be honest with you. It looks actually not too dissimilar to a natural underwater environment, and that's fine. It's just getting a bit much when I'm trying to grow macroalgaes, like this red hair algae, and it's just growing all over it. Same with the blue octodes, it's smothering it. Now, I wouldn't mind it if it was just a little bit of hair algae, you know, I don't mind it on the rock work and stuff like that, but it's actually starting to smother the stuff that I want to grow, including the corals to some extent. And to be fair, the corals are really happy. Look, this green Kenya tree is growing really nicely. Now that started off from a tiny little fluorescent dot on a bit of rock work to this, and it's even spread, which I think is quite cool. So that suggests to me that the actual ecosystem in this tank is really healthy because you don't get soft corals spreading and multiplying if things aren't decent in terms of water quality. So that sort of does beg the question why I'm getting so much hair algae and I've just got to lay it down to the fact that this lava rock has something in it which is making this hair algae thrive. Now you know I could remove all of the lava rock and start again but it's taken me months seven eight months to get to this point and i feel like the best course of option now is just to follow it through and see where this particular tank goes now i've removed the lamarck angel i feel like the calerpa can actually grow now because i 
it took me a while to realise who it was who it was doing the damage because I didn't really suspect the Lamarck Angel, but I put some Calerpa in like this, and by the morning, all the little shoots were nibbled, and the Calerpa just wasn't able to grow. And it's clearly the Lamarck Angel, because I put some more Calerpa in there, and it hasn't been nibbled. So unless one of these fish is trying to make me look like a fool, um, I'm pretty sure Lamarck Angels are no longer on my macroalgae safe list. What I'm hoping is now that we can get this macro algae growing, we can outcompete this hair algae from the nutrients it's getting from, I guess, the lava rock. It's um, another thing which I've had to wait to add for various reasons, including the maturation of the tank. Macro algae hates immature tanks and systems, and this tank's only just getting there when it comes to maturation. Now the sand bed's looking really nice. It was covered, I think even in my previous video, we were covered in hair algae, we were covered in like diatoms and brown algae, but that's cleared up really, really nicely. And I think it's due to large and regular water changes that I've been doing on this system. And it's helped us to keep the water quality stable. I've been doing the same technique on this side as well, that's large and regular water changes. And the actual outcome of that is pretty staggering. All of my problems on this particular system regarding hair algae has pretty much disappeared. It's a little bit lingering, but absolutely night and day. And my sand bed is clean as you like. There is barely anything in here in terms of sand bed cleaners. There's the odd hermit crab, but nothing really sort of devoted to turning the sand over. And it's so, so clean. The macro algae is getting cleaner. There's barely any hair algae growing on my Botrycladia now, which is so relieving because I thought I'd lose this species but we are looking pretty good and this is the power of doing water changes with a high quality salt obviously it's cost me a bit to do these water changes um, I use about 10 kilos per change you can see just how much this coralline algae is starting to spread throughout the system this wasn't even present about a month and a half ago it's just since the water quality has improved that we're getting this coralline spreading. And it's um, pretty persistent everywhere. You know, it starts off with a couple of dots and then within maybe in a week or two, you are then talking big circular areas of your aquarium covered in coralline. So it's pretty nice. And this is obviously outcompete, hopefully, this horrible green algae growing on the glass. And the difference is, it hasn't really happened on this side. Um, I don't understand why, whether it is the lava rock, because the system I just showed you was put up after this tank. And you can see there is some coralline, although it's red coralline. But every time it tries to grow and take over, like on the back glass here, the hair algae just smothers it and stops it from developing as it would on the other side of my system. So I'm just hoping now that we can potentially move forward with this Calerpa and have this tank look how I want it to. Now obviously seven or eight months is not a mature tank, you know, it might be two years before this tank's looking mature or anywhere near to being stable. But I am a bit surprised at the length of time it's taking and I can only put it down to this lava rock because I've set up enough tanks in my career to know what's normal and had I used dry live rock or had I used normal live rock then I wouldn't be expecting this amount of hair algae this persistent anyway because obviously you do get hair algae when you set up a reef tank it's a normal part of the maturation cycle it's normally a couple of months in you start getting these issues and it's what I had on my other system that I just showed you it had a very similar problem lots and lots of hair algae growing everywhere but it only lasted maybe two months and then now as you can see it's receded away and on this side it hasn't and these tanks here they're all linked to that fluval shaker and they do have a bit of hair algae in them I'm not gonna lie there's some on the rock there there's a bit on the rock there and so on there is hair algae in these but it's not to the same degree I mean this one's quite bad but it's not to the same degree as the shaker. Lighting wise, it's fairly typical. There's T5s, there's a fluval LED on there as well. 
we've got an Orfec light here um, and a tri-spec. So it's not really a difference in the lighting or anything like that. It's just like local environment, I'm fairly sure. So I think it's fairly sure to say, although I haven't done any experiments to prove it, but as a hypothesis, I think it's fairly reasonable to say that the lava rock is causing some sort of issue with nutrients in this particular tank. So moving forward, we're just going to let it play out. We're just going to let it see how it develops, um, see if this macro algae will help with the excess nutrients in here and help to outcompete this hair algae. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel. Once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.